going to sugarcoat things. This is a lousy day, and we got some truly hideous results. However, the lesson of this earnings season is not that is not that all companies are doing terribly and you got to head for the hills. That is not the right takeaway. There are some silver linings out there. You just need to know where to look. Take this huge disappointment we got from DuPont today. Giant chemical company that missed numbers in a major way. Stock got Polax down 9%. There was very little to like about this quarter. But just because DuPont disappointed doesn't mean every other chemical company is doing badly. In fact, when you consider how bad DuPont was, some of the positive results we've seen in this space look even more impressive. Positive results like the terrific quarter we got from PPG last week. PPG is a longtime Kramer fave, especially chemical company. Makes all kinds of coatings for everything from cars to airplanes to buildings to various industrial uses. The big difference between PPG and DuPont, PPG has been much more aggressive about taking control of its own destiny by moving away from commodity chemicals, business is basically at the mercy of the global economy, and instead focusing on high-value-added proprietary chemicals that can't be easily duplicated. In July, PPG announced that it's spinning off its remaining commodity chemical biz, merging it with Georgia Gulf in a deal that should close sometime in the first quarter of next year. That deal will complete PPG's transformation into a specialty player that can thrive even when economies around the globe are struggling. But even though the deal hasn't happened yet, PPG still managed to deliver a solid quarter when it reported last Thursday. It posted a five cent earnings beat, not miss, but beat, off a $2.19 basis. And while revenues were basically flat, that was because PPG took a 4% hit from the foreign exchange. PPG saw real strength in the U.S., courtesy of a booming auto business, as well as a healthy aerospace biz. While Asia and Latin America were flat, Europe was down 4%. That European week is okay, not so hot, but it was an improvement for the previous quarter. PPG's balance sheet is strong, getting stronger, pays you a decent 2% yield. And perhaps best of all, thanks to today's sell off, you're getting a fantastic entry point in a stock that rarely pulls back. Yep, after the mess we got from DuPont, I feel even better about this one, but don't take it from me. Let's talk to Chuck Bunch, the chairman and CEO of PPG Industries, about the quarter and where his company is headed. Chuck, welcome back to the show. Oh, thanks, Jim. It's great to be with you again. All right, Chuck, this was clearly uh, today a day that demonstrated that being commodity, commodity chemicals, which DuPont is still in, even though they've tried very hard to go away, is just not working in, this, in the world of globalization right now. But your strategy, total vindication. Well, for us, our commodity chemical business was a, always a good business, just not a core business. But as you know, these commodity Commodity chemical businesses can be volatile and cyclical. And what we've been trying to do is become a more consistent, more specialty company going forward. And we think we've done that with the Georgia Gulf transaction. Okay, if you could, for the people who are just now starting to watch the show or trying to understand some of these technicalities, what is better about a proprietary chemical company in terms of why it's not at the whims and the vicissitudes of the world economy? Well, typically, you have good points of differentiation and value creation for your customers. These are proprietary innovations that you can add value to your customers, such as, uh, you know, the automotive OEM manufacturers or the aerospace companies where you're bringing either corrosion protection, uh, new designs, decoration, longer-lasting coating. So these are the types of things that let your customers appreciate the things that you do they can add value for their customers and it gets a tighter relationship you also have more consistent sales and earnings and you're not uh, as exposed to the ups and downs of either the economic cycles or pricing that you can get into with these commodity chemical businesses all right chuck you also had what you used the term i haven't heard this whole earnings period other than for you excellent Auto, auto results. Excellent. Now, uh, there are companies in this country and in Europe that you're affiliated with that are doing very, very well in the auto business. Yes, Jim. You know, the automotive uh, OEM business globally is still quite healthy. You know, we're going to see 5 to 6 percent global growth. And here in North America, the business has been excellent. We're seeing so far through the first three quarters almost 20% growth in OEM builds here in North America. It's a bit of an, a renaissance here for automotive manufacturing in North America. We're benefiting from that trend. Yes, we have seen weakness in Europe, but the overall strength of our business, what we've been doing for our customers, and some of the restructuring in Europe, as an example, or the low localization of some of our production capacity in emerging markets like China or South Korea or Mexico are really, really helping us to capitalize on what's been a really solid global trend and an excellent performance out of the industry here in North America. One of the big weaknesses in DuPont was titanium dioxide, TiO2, is a whitener. 
uh, it's been responsible for about 60 percent of their growth in the, uh, in the last few quarters. So it, it, it was a monumental decline. They said, you are a buyer of titanium dioxide. So I presume that DuPont's woes could be good for your company. Yes, we've experienced uh, quite a bit of inflation in, uh, in TIO2 purchases over the last few years. And still year over year in the third quarter uh, here in 2012, the prices for TIO2 in North America are higher than they were a year ago. But that trend has changed uh, uh, during 2012. We've seen some, for the first time, sequential declines. Prices are still higher than they were last year, but we're finally getting some moderation in this uh, chemical commodity that's an important component of our uh, formulations, and we think this will be a help for us going forward as we now no longer have to engage in these aggressive uh, measures to reduce the impact of all this TIO2 inflation in our uh, raw material cost picture. All right, one last question. When you, uh, you're you doing this deal with Georgia Gulf, it's a little hard, it's called Reverse uh, Morris Trust, but people can tender their PPG stock if they want. Uh, if you're a holder of PPG, would you tender? Uh, right now, I would encourage, obviously, all of our long-term PPG shareholders to continue to uh, uh, stick with PPG. This has been a, a great story for them and for uh, us as a company. We think our best days are in front of us. But this is still an excellent opportunity to acquire Georgia Gulf shares through this tendering process. We think the combination of our commodity chemical business with Georgia Gulf is going to be a good win-win for both companies. Georgia Gulf is going to be, we think, a stronger commodity player exposed to the commodity chemical cycle on the PVC side, mostly in North America, which should be a strong market for the next couple of years. So we think it's going to be a good transaction, not only for PPG, but also for Georgia Gulf. And our shareholders will now have a choice whether they want to tender. But certainly, we think the prospects for both companies are good. But longer term, PPG, this should be an excellent value creator for us. Well, I totally agree. Chuck Bunch, you delivered again. Boy, it's nice to have something to bust the gloom of the chemicals today. So so thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you, Jim. That's Chuck Bunch, Chairman and CEO of PPG. Totally delivered. Not everybody had a tough quarter. They had a good one. Stay with Kramer.